Hello, and welcome to this video demonstration showing how EdgeX can be used to manage and control OnRev compliant cameras at the Edge. In this demonstration, EdgeX will be used to control OnRev camera services, such as pan, tilt, and zoom movements, and will also act as video feeds from which we can run real-time Edge analytics. This demonstration will showcase an inferencing microservice, which will take the video stream of the camera from EdgeX, run an AI inferencing model on it, and output the result via MQTT, all on the edge, all in real time. EdgeX and all the inferencing microservices will be running on a Debian-based desktop machine, and the camera will be connected wirelessly on the same network. We will be using a TP-Link TAPO C200 camera, which we know has OnViv capabilities. Let's get started. The first thing we'll do is clone all the required repositories. So we have EdgeX composed to allow us to build and run EdgeX with the OnViv device service. We will also clone the OnViv source code to help us set up the camera later on. And finally, EdgeX examples repository, which includes the inferencing example that will be ultimately showcased in this video. Let's begin by setting up EdgeX. We will change directory into the EdgeX Compose repository inside the Compose Builder folder and run the following make command to build EdgeX with the OnViv device service. Once that's done, let's run a Docker PS just to ensure all the microservices are running. As you can see, we have the EdgeX UI running on port 4000. So let's try and open that up in a browser. And here we go. We have EdgeX running with the OnViv camera device service, a preloaded OnViv device, along with example profiles. Next thing we'll do is set up the camera itself. So let's head over to the Tapo app on a smartphone. Let's select the camera we wish to use, hit the settings icon at the top right, scroll down to advanced settings, camera account, and here we set up a username and password, allowing us to use the OnViv capabilities of the camera. Another useful thing we can do from within the app is retrieve the IP address of the camera which will help when provisioning with EdgeX later on. You'll also find the camera's MAC address here too. So now the camera's all set up, we can head back onto the computer and provision the device on EdgeX. In this demo, we'll be using the following curl command. We'll alter some of the optional metadata here to set the location. We'll set the MAC address of the camera found from the Tapo app. Set the port number to 2020, as that's the OnViv port of the Tapo camera. And finally, enter the IP address that we found earlier. Hit enter, ensuring we get a successful status code 201. Now we need to set up the camera credentials. To do this, a script has been created which can be found within the OnViv source code. So let's cd into there and run the map-credentials.sh script. Let's create new credentials. Enter the secret path, which by default is credential 001. Enter the username and password set in the Tapo app. Here we'll pick username slash token authentication. And here we can assign a MAC address of the camera from the Tapo app. After hitting enter, you can see we have success messages across the board. So now let's head over to the EdgeX UI to see if the camera has been successfully provisioned. As you can see, we have camera 001 here and we can run get commands straight from the UI, which output JSON results from the Tapo camera itself. We can also issue commands straight from the terminal using curl. Here you can see we issue a command to retrieve all the current provision devices. Now we will retrieve a stream URI from EdgeX of the connected camera. First, we query all available profiles from within the camera. Here you can see we have a token profile one. So let's get the stream URI for that profile. First, we convert a JSON payload to base64, including the profile token. We then issue another curl command that is used to retrieve stream URIs for a given token. So we insert the converted JSON base64 value into the command. 
As you can see, it outputs a stream URI. We can view the stream using a command line tool called ffplay, making sure we enter the username and password of the camera. As you can see here, we'll enter the username in single quotations, followed by the password at the stream URI's address. And now we can see a live feed from the camera. Okay, let's move on to the inferencing example. Let's change directory into the edgex examples repository inside the application services slash customs folder and inside the camera management example. We will begin by building the edge video analytics microservice using the following make command, which essentially pulls all of the OpenVINO images we require. We then open up a new terminal and run the inferencing microservice in the background. Again, a make command is supplied, which essentially spins up all the Docker images using Docker Compose. Next, we have to configure, build, and run the camera management application. First thing you have to do is edit the configuration.toml file with the credentials of the OnViv camera. Then we can build the application using make build app. And finally, we can run the application using make run app. As you can see, the console outputs a local host address, which we can plug into a browser to access the camera apps UI. As you can see from the UI, we have simple controls to control the PTZ movement of the camera. So let's relaunch the video stream using FF play and set it aside and press one of the buttons and see what happens. As you can see, each button press corresponds to a REST command. Each REST command gets sent to EdgeX, and EdgeX communicates with the camera, allowing it to control its movements. Okay, let's see how the video inferencing works. So we select a camera, select the desired stream we wish to run inference on. As you can see, we have multiple stream profiles we can use and we'll just pick the 1080p one and select which model to use. Let's start the pipeline and we can see that everything seems to be running correctly. We can now retrieve real-time event data in a JSON format and retrieve all our classification results. You can see at the top left that we have some visual cues of the objects detected and the percentage of their confidence levels. We can also see in the console that we have been given an RTSP link that will output the results on top of the camera's video stream in real time as they come in. So we will use ffplay again to view the stream using the local host And here we go, real-time inferencing happening on the edge. And as all the data is being published by MQTT, we can subscribe to the topic using Mosquito and watch the data come through in real time. Thanks for watching. If you wish to follow along with this video and use the commands that were used, please refer to the start of the demonstration where we make reference to three of the repositories that were used.